Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today we're going to talk about automating adding client data to a Word document with some Microsoft Access VBA automation. I know it sounds crazy, but we're going to basically use Access to add data to a Word document. Why? You'll see why in just a minute. Today's question comes from Angela in Toledo, Ohio, one of my Platinum members. Angela says, our office uses Microsoft Word documents to keep track of client information that does not easily fit into our Access database. Things like pictures, financial charts, and various notes. My boss is old school and refuses to switch to Access, so he insists that we maintain these Word documents for quick reference and printing. The rest of us rely on Access for managing client data, which means we are constantly updating both systems. I would like to find a way to streamline this process. Right now, I have to manually open the Word document and copy and paste recent client interactions multiple times per day. Is there a way to store a link to the document and access so we can open it easily when needed, but also automate the process of adding recent contact records to the end of the document with a single button click? Ideally, it would open the document, insert the latest contact details, save, and close automatically. Okay, there's a lot to bite off and chew here, but the answer to all of your questions is yes, and we'll discuss it in this video. Uh, but first, I've been in your situation. Back when I used to do consulting work, I've had several clients like this, where, you know, the, this one law firm I can remember from Buffalo, um, the, the managing partner, we couldn't drag him screaming and kicking into Microsoft Access. He did not want to deal with the database. He had his old Word and WordPerfect documents, Excel spreadsheets, and, and that's what he was using. No one could talk him out of it, and he was the boss. So I get where you're coming from, especially if you've got years and years and years of old documents and you want to keep working with those, and you don't want to necessarily import all that stuff into Access. I understand. I get it. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you a way where you can link that document in and click a button, and it'll open it in Word. And then I'll show you how you can automate adding data to the end of the document with just one click as well. So we'll do both of those in this video. But first, this is a developer lesson. What does that mean? Well, opening up the Word document that already exists and just, you know, popping it open in Word, that's not hard at all. That's In fact, that's one line of code, which I'll show you in just a minute. The other part, adding stuff to the end of it, that's a little bit more complicated, but I'm gonna walk you through it, don't worry. We do have some prerequisites. It's a developer lesson, so that means if you're not familiar with VBA and you haven't watched my VBA course, go watch this, about 20 minutes long. It'll teach you everything you need to know to get started. Make sure you understand how to use variables. We're gonna use if-then statements, so go watch this video. And we're gonna use follow hyperlink to open up the Word document. And that's the easy part. I got another whole video on that one. I'm gonna show you that one first real quick. These are all free videos. They're on my YouTube channel. They're on my website. Go watch those and come on back. Okay, here I am in my tech help free template. This is a free database. You can grab a copy off my website if you want to. And let's assume that each client has one Word document associated with them. We're gonna have it stored in a server folder and it's gonna be based on their customer ID. So, you know, doc1, doc, docx, or whatever. All right, here I've created on my server, which is my Z drive in the temp folder, a folder called client files. And this is where I'll put all the client files. It'll be their customer ID dot DOCX, okay? Okay, I'm gonna open up Word and this is customer one, one's file, whatever you wanna say in there, I'll put some pictures in here. We got, there's this picture and whatever other information you wanna have in here, right? Okay, all right, let's save this, Control S, I'm gonna hit more options, gonna go to browse gonna browse to that client files folder and I'm gonna save this just as one.docx. And there we go, it's saved, okay. I can now close this and now we can make a button in here to open up their client file. All right, I'll just copy one of these buttons, copy, paste, control C, control V, and then client word doc or whatever you wanna call the button, right? There we go, give it a good name, client, Word button, and then right click build event. And right here is where we're gonna say follow hyperlink. And then where are we going? Well, we're going to, in my case, it's gonna be Z colon backslash temp backslash client files 
backslash, and then it's the customer ID and dot .docx. That's the full path to the file name. Okay? Okay. All right, debug compile once in a while. Come back out here. Let's close it. Save changes, yes. Open her up and click the button. And there we go. Nice and simple, right? Follow hyperlink, opens it right up. Now, if you go to someone else's record who doesn't have a client file and click the button, it's gonna say, can't open a specified file. I'll teach you how to deal with that in the extended cut. For now, you have to assume that the file's already there. Now, the stuff that we want to add to the end is usually this contact stuff in here. All right, want to add this, want to add this. You know, the contacts are designed for when someone comes into the office, right? And, you know, or you, you call them on the phone or you got a document, whatever. You come in here, you come down here, you say, okay, uh, talked on the phone, blah, 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 blah. You could put more extended stuff in the notes down here. You know, uh, such a sweet, nice boy. Okay. And then what Angela wants to do is she doesn't want to have to then copy and paste all this stuff and open up that document. She just wants to hit a button and have that added to the document. All right, easy enough, right? Okay, design view. Let's slide this over here. I already got this little field sitting there, but that's okay, you can ignore that. In fact, I'm just gonna slide you over here. That's just a hidden customer ID so we can reference it other places. Let's drop a button on here, van button, drop it right there. We're gonna cancel the wizard and we're gonna say add to word doc, just like that, and the button. And we can make the button a little bit like that. Okay, there we go, beautiful. Okay, name, add, doc, button, whatever you wanna call it. Now what we're gonna be adding is the contact date, the description, and the notes at the end of that Word document. And again, we assume it, it already exists. So right click, build event. Need some variables. We need, we need to dim W as an object, doc as an object, file path as a string, and um, the text to add as a string, which is just gonna be a combination of some of the other things. Now the file path, we already figured it out. We already figured it out in the customer form. So let's go back over there and grab it. Now watch this. Instead of going back through and finding the customer form and going to design view, watch this. View, Project Explorer. Oh, here's all the forms and reports and stuff and modules, right? We know that's in the customer form, so there it is. Here it is right there. There's the format for our file for this customer. And the customer ID is on this form, right? So just copy that. Now I can close this and we're right back here. That that's pretty cool. When you're done with this, you can close that too. All right, file path equals that, and the customer ID, like I said, is on this form, so we're good. Now the text to add. What do we want to put down at the end of the at the end of the document? Well, let's say it's going to equal. Um, let me see those field names. Where are we at? Okay, so we got contact date. So it's going to be equal to contact date, and you can format that if you want to. I'm not going to bother. And then a colon like that with a space after it, and then the description, and then maybe a, a period, and then how about the notes? Okay, so one big paragraph with the date, description, and notes. Okay, so that's all set. Now what we need to do is we need to create an instance of Microsoft Word. In other words, launch the Word application. So create instance of Word. And that's what that W object is up there. All right, so it's going to be set W equals create object, and then in quotes, word.application. Okay, that's a special type of object. It's a Microsoft Word application. Access knows what that is. Okay, now that we've created the instance of Word, in other words, Microsoft Word is, is running in the background, basically. If you opened up your task manager at this point, you'd see, what is it, uh, winword.exe? Okay, but now we're gonna open up that specific document. So open our document. And that's where that doc object comes in. So set doc equals W, that instance of word, dot documents, dot open file path. Okay, and yes, you will get an error here if the file doesn't exist. Again, I'll teach you how to deal with that in the extended cut. I'll show you how to actually create it if it doesn't exist.
basically make a new document. All right, now we're going to append the text at the end of the document. All right, here's how it looks. Ready? It's going to be with doc.range and then end with down here. Okay, so doc.range is what we're working with. And it's going to be dot collapse zero, and that's moved to the end of the document. Now, you're not going to see any of these things camel case, right? Capitalize themselves because we're using something here called late binding. If you want to see all these things with the IntelliSense, you have to use early binding. I got a whole separate video on this. And basically that means you got to put a reference to Microsoft Word in your tools references. I don't like doing this because then this doesn't necessarily become portable to other computers. They have to have Word installed. It's got to be in the exact same folders and blah, blah, blah. So you just have to kind of deal with the fact that you're not going to be able to see some of these things capitalized with the IntelliSense. Any objects that are word specific, okay? You can still capitalize them yourself if you want to, and I often do, just so I don't go crazy, okay? All right, so we've moved to the end of the document. Why is it collapse zero? Again, I, I don't know. That's just how the people who created Word did it. It's collapse zero means move to the end. Now, after that, we're going to say dot insert paragraph after. And that obviously inserts a new paragraph at the end of the document. Now we got to move to the end again. So dot collapse zero. And then finally dot text equals our text to add. Okay. All right. Now that we're done with that, we can save and close the document, All right? It's going to be doc dot save and then doc dot close and then put false after that. That false says, don't prompt me to save changes. Even though you already saved the changes, it'll still prompt you, right? False means don't prompt to save. I, it's why, I don't know. Again, that just, that's how it is. <laughs> All right, now we're gonna quit Word and clean up. So W dot quit, that's gonna quit Word. Set doc equals nothing. Any variable that's an object variable that you set, you always wanna destroy it when you're done. And then set W equals nothing. That closes all word all up. And then you're all done and give it a beep. Beep <laughs> or whatever you want a message box, you know, whatever's added. Cause you're not gonna see anything with this. We didn't display it at all. Yes, there's ways you can make word visible and you can see what it's doing and you can actually even leave it open when you're done editing it. Again, I'm gonna cover some of these options in the extended cut. But for now, our goal is just to open the document in the background, add the text to it. And if you want to see it, click your other button, right? All right, so debug compile once in a while. Everything compiled. Let's close that up. Close that up. Save changes. Yes. Close it, close it, save it. Yep. Okay. Now, let's take a look at our Word document again. Click the button. Open her up. All right, that's what it looks like. I'm going to close it down. Let's go into contacts here. I'm going to add this to the Word document. Click. And takes a second. There you go. You're listening for your beep. I'm going to add this one. And you can make a field in here like that follow up field. Let's say add another uh, checkbox in here that says added to um, added to the word document. And as soon as you hit this button, set that value equal to true. And then you'll know what has been added or not. Right. And that's that's real super simple to do. Here, let me show you. Let's go into um, here. We're in the contact F, right? Let's just say we're gonna use the add to follow up button, right? So right in here, you know, mark as added. We'll just say, um, what's the name of the field now? I gotta go look and see what the name of the field is. Design view, it's just follow up, okay. So in here, you would say follow up equals true and then a me dot refresh to save that record, right? Again, assuming follow up is, you know, the, the, the added to whatever, so here. Added. <laughs> okay. I'm just cheating. I'm using the same field. You'd add another field, right? You you get what I'm doing there, right? You you, can, you feel me? Are you, are you picking up what I'm laying down? All right. So now I come in here. I come in here. I hit the add button. Does its thing. Takes a second, but there. See? Added. All right. Come down here. And you could put a little warning in there if this is already checked. Are you sure you want to add it again? There's all kinds of stuff you could do. I could spend hours and hours doing this stuff. Okay, all right, so we've added those three things. Let's go take a look at our Word document and see if it looks good. Ready? Click on it, and oh, look at that. Look at all that stuff is in there. Such a sweet, nice boy, too. 
It's got the date, it's got the description, it's got the time if there's a time in there. And now you're happy, the boss is happy, it's easy to add stuff with one little click, and there you go, that's it. Like I said before, it's not the easiest stuff, and, and again, a lot of this stuff, you know, I gotta look up this stuff too. I work with Access all day, every day, day in and day out, but I don't do word automation every day. So yeah, I had to Google some of this stuff myself. I, I've done this before in the past. I kind of remembered what the commands were, but I don't remember this off the top of my head. So, you know, you got to sometimes look stuff up. There you go. Now you can look it up in the code vault if you're a gold member. <laughs> All right. In the extended cut, we've got a lot of stuff we're going to cover. It's going to be a long extended cut today. All right. First, we're going to check to see if that Word doc exists. If you go to view it and it doesn't exist, it's just going to tell you, hey, this file doesn't exist. That's easy. That's easy. That's real easy. But if you go into here and you try to add stuff to the Word document, if it doesn't exist, we're going to create it at that point. Okay, we'll make a new document. All right. Also, if someone else has this document open, it'll be locked. Microsoft Word actually creates a lock file and it will lock it and you won't be able to add to it. Okay, so if you click on this button, we'll have it yell and say, hey, someone else has this document open. You can't add to it right now. All right, that's important also. I'm also gonna show you how to leave Word visible so that when it's adding, it's gonna actually show you Word and we'll give you the option to leave it open so you can continue to edit it after you, continue to edit it after you click on this button there. So lots of stuff we're gonna cover, some extra cool features and uh, silver members on up get access to all the extended cut videos. Gold members get access to my code vault, which you'll find all this in the code vault. And you could download these databases that I built in the tech help videos and all kinds of cool stuff. So what are you waiting for? Join today. But that is going to be your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. And make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of Access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mentioned in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that show more link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there. Just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like level one, level two is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month. And yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus you get access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject and you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by accesslearningzone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.